This week on El Cara Ham Radio, we are climbing another mountain in preparation for the Macquarie Gravel Rally. As some of you have seen in past videos, we're always looking for that one location that maybe we can only have to use one crossband repeater. That's what's coming up this week on El Cara Ham Radio. So this is our first time going out Redden's Run and this year and we've had a lot of rain and you can see that this area, this part of the road really gotten chewed up by the creek. The creek's over here to the right but it'll overflow its bank and it looks like they've moved some of the heavier rock through but they still had a lot of water come through. So a lot of the smaller aggregate that they usually have down through here has been washed away. Josh is looking to put some rocks in some strategic areas so that we don't have to bottom out anywhere. But you can see as we go down through here, it levels out, not quite so large bouldery. And then down here is the crossing that you guys, if you've watched the channel and you've watched the McCreary County Gravel Rally, or the McCreary Gravel Rally, they leave the county off. But uh, anyway, you've seen Chris go through here in his Tacoma. And we're going to go through with my 4 before my Ford. But it's not bad at all down this way. But you have to swing left here and then just go through the creek there. And for whatever reason... They just haven't put down any of the flagstones or some of the uh, long horizontal stuff, and probably because it's just it would just get covered up. But they actually race through here on race day, so it's pretty cool. It's uh, it's neat, it really is. But the the hardest part is back here where the truck is, and we'll get through it. Won't be a problem. It's just setting up some things so that we're we're not uh, botting them out. So when we get to the other side, I may come back. And keep in mind, we're trying to get up to a mountain. The mountain's right over here. You can't really see it through the trees, but it's straight up that way. And there's a road, we there's a forest road that goes up there, similar to a forest road we have used on the other side of the mountain, which is on this side. And uh, But we're trying to get opposite this year just to see if it would make a difference. So anyway, I'll bring you back in the next segment. We may be uh, at the forest road by that point once we get through this little obstacle. Alrighty, don't mind the garbage, but uh, we've got the masts, the drive on just to put the masts on top of something. We've got the uh, bar to the right over there. There's the cross band repeater. And so that's what we're gonna lug. Um, Josh is doing most of the lugging, but of course I've got to carry a lot of the smaller stuff and just keep it out of the, the weeds and whatnot. We do have a forest road right over here and they keep these closed because there's too many yahoos back in here that want to get up here and then they get stuck and they don't want people getting stuck going up here. So, but it makes it an easier walk and climb and uh, Josh is way in better shape than I am. So, but we, we won't have to go through the woods directly. We should be able to follow this road right up to the top of the ridge because that's typically what they do with these forest roads so that they can keep them clear of debris. And if a fire were to break out, they can get equipment up here uh, if they need to. So, but that's, that's where we are. We did make it. We were unable to hit the 150 repeater, which is our Monticello repeater from here. But that's because we've got mountains and undulations between us and there. And it's just not, not possible. But once we get up on top of this ridge, it should be practically a straight shot. Alrighty, so we're going to begin the, the climb. If uh, occasionally I'm not too out of breath, I know I will be at some point, but uh, I'll try to bring you back and just, you know, give you an indication of just, you know, what kind of what kind of road and climb we've got once we get further into it. But for now, we're going to get everything packed up and ready to go. Alrighty, well, Josh and I have walked, what do you think, half a mile? Yeah, maybe half a mile. Maybe half. half a mile. And the road is this nice up here. We're, eh, I don't know, we're halfway up the actual ridge maybe but uh 
but you can see the through the trees there that ridge is tennessee that's how close to the border we are and again these ridges are just tough to get anything in and out of and that's why we've taken the extra time josh and i have and others in previous years to hike some of these mountains since the beginning josh you mind carrying these for just a second thanks sir i know you carry everything else too but josh is the pack mule today but um every year we've tried to improve our crossband repeater locations in fact we've got such a good location now on some of the stages that we only need one. We found a high, high enough spot that's relatively easy to get to. So we're hoping to get maybe something similar to that with this, what is it, Mount Angel? Um, yeah, Mount Angel. So we're hoping, you know, and until you test it, you don't know. So we're gonna uh, definitely try to hit the repeater from here once we get up top. And then set up the cross band repeater as a second test. We've got one of our members, KQ4 S ZHM Z Hotel Foxtrot. Yeah, Z Hotel Motel. Motel. And uh, so we'll see. So I'll bring you back once we get to the top of the ridge. Well, what do you think, Josh? I don't know, Brian. I think if I get a running start I'm back over there, I, I could probably make it. You could probably do a Tom Cruise kind of thing. I think you I know. can make it. The downside is, is we're jumping level. If it yeah. were down, we yeah. could jump that. We're not that old. No. Well, folks, no, we're obviously we're kidding. Um, this is 20 feet by 15, so, I mean, it's too wide. But, obviously, one of the things that Josh and I have been remarking about is this has been a really nice road up to now. So once they open up the forest gate, we can drive up here most of the way, but they won't have this fixed by the time of the race. So the rest of this, they'll have to trek up, but that's a huge- Three quarters of the journey right here. Three quarters made it to here, yeah. So if everything else works out well, as far as you know, hitting the repeater and or talking to Ben at the our HQ location, it was worth coming up here probably, so. Anyway, uh, we had to show this uh, small obstacle. Uh, we get to the other side and probably talk towards the top of the ridge. We'll come back. Uh huh. Right? I think I would go on this one. I think I would too. That's going to take us further back. And I'm pretty sure the finish of the race is over there. Oh, you think it is? I was thinking it was a little bit further to your right, but. Right over here. Okay. You know, in that last spot where we climbed the hill. Right. And we weren't, there was too much stuff getting around here to get to the end. Uh huh. And back to the front. But to I the think front, yeah. We might be able to get the whole front. Okay. We, we may. All right. Wish we had that other truck, you know, just. Yeah, that other person just. Start to finish. It. You know, you'd be an hour back to the truck from here. Oh, gosh, yeah. And then it takes. Then you'd have to drive it. You'd have to drive it. And breaking this down the hour back out. Yeah. Now I'm comfortable this is going to hit a lot of the track, so it has to. Yeah. So, so for those of you that are new, uh, Josh has just pulled out uh, one of the six uh, crossband repeaters that we have built and uh, for this exact purpose uh, for this race. And this is fully charged up. Uh, we use lithium-ion battery. And uh, we've got two radios that we use for crossbanding because the race organization uses two meters and what we do is 70 centimeters back towards what's called clerk of the course but for our purposes in am radio that would be net control and uh so we got our two masks here to get it up in the air if we need more height we could add more mass and then also guy it out but we're just going to use this gp3 two masts and uh and see how well it does and it should do just fine We've already had a test with uh, HTs back to the repeater, the uh, 150 repeater that some of you have watched uh, is just gangbusters now. So uh, we're hitting the repeater just fine. And so in a worst case scenario, we could bounce somebody out of this valley to the 150 repeater. So, so we know that already works. 
So the great thing is, is we've got options, and uh, it's just a little bit of effort to find these mountains and these mountain tops, and finding forest access roads. Sorry for the wind. I really like how we have these kits set up, Ryan, where we have a ranch. Yeah. Everything we need. Everything's there. And we have the little bag in there to keep everything. And yeah. You know, we, we thought it through and organized it. And it's gone through several iterations, but it does really well. And worst case, you know, if we lose us uh, a radial or something, we can always replace those. And so, All right, we're going to put this together, and we'll be back. All right, we got the antenna up now in the air. It's going to give us good coverage out into our little box now that's a splitter and some of you are going to say Brian you're losing signal indeed we are but keep in mind we're using two bands one radio is VHF and one is UHF so we need that splitter to feed both radios can you tell what the UHF is on yep four four five seven three seven five perfect and we are one four six five three five five three five all right so it's toned also yeah the, there's 250.3 on both all right we'll come back once we have our hts ready to go and as luck would have it the ht video didn't make it i don't know what happened but to give you a little bit of a summary of what we ended up doing we were able to take our hts that we had brought up with us and use them through the crossband repeater to talk to our um, other member, KQ4ZHM, and uh, to, uh, to hit where we're gonna have the emergency communications trailer. We were able to communicate with him with no issues whatsoever. And we were also able to communicate with uh, four or five different repeaters in the area. But of those, the 150, which we call the Monticello repeater, is full scale. And that's from this location. We actually did walk or hike a little bit further to the right on this ridge and got an even better vantage point, both east and west. And we should be able to, hit, uh, be able to communicate the entire length of this stage with one crossband repeater. Now... Having said that, all this testing is really good with no leaves on the trees and not having driven the route itself, but uh, that comes up in our next test, is driving the route with the crossband repeater to the right of where we are here, uh, about another 400 yards, and uh, should work out really well. So we're looking forward to that final test in preparation. And that will do it this week. For the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association, I'm KY4BDP Brian. Stay tuned for part two of this test with a single crossband repeater location for Redden's Run 73, and we'll see you in the next video.